Now, but we instructions in talking to God. Instructions, these guys, Peter and John, instructions from God were clear. Anything God tells us to do, young or old, his instructions are clear. Do you believe that? When he tells us to pray, it's those instructions about praying and about being blessed. That's what we miss. They are clear. They are clear. He said, if you ask in my name, I'll do it. But you must be doing God's will. That's clear. How, how much clearer can we make that? You can't be doing your thing and think God's going to bless you now. So. Amen. Now, here, here is, and let me throw this in before I leave this. Here is what I consider God's command for praying. First Thessalonians chapter 5. In fact, I, I got two scriptures here and I'm going to leave this. Oh man, look at the time. I, I, got, I got to get two other points in here. You got time. But, but, but first Thessalonians chapter 5. Amen. Verse 17. First. Uh, what does that say? Pray without ceasing. Amen. See, Amen. he tells the Holy Spirit or Paul tells us that we are to pray without What does that mean? A, a, a preacher, what, what does it mean to pray without ceasing? You ever had a toothache? <laughs> you ever had a toothache? <laughs> and, that, and I say toothache because it is the most annoying pain. I mean, if you got tooth, you can't eat. Couldn't tell that by some of us, some of us not have a But it's a norm. You can't eat. You can't sleep. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and yeah, the pain is just, it's just unbearable. But you know what? Even if you are a friend of that dentist, and it may take, it may hurt, have to hurt a month, or some of us, let it hurt a month. I can take it. You know, okay, take it. <laughs> And you just keep putting stuff in there and taking medicine. It's the most annoying pain that you can have. But one thing for sure, you don't take an 800 milligram or whatever or not one time. Some of us old deal, man. <laughs> I say that because you know what it means to cease or without cease. It's a continuous, annoying pain, and you work on it continuously. I mean, that's because you want to rid it. Well, what well, Paul is telling the church, telling members, telling us together, he said, we are to pray without ceasing. In other words, pray till something happens. Amen. We're, we're, we're coming together in this assembly. We are praying. Oh, yes, yeah, see, we prayed today. Yeah. Preach had us get together, we pray. What happened? Pray that something happens. And then I want to run the loop. I'm, I'm through with this. I, that'll be that part. Well, you sure didn't make us feel good. Well, you didn't feel good. Don't you don't drive home by yourself. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And what does the book say beginning and verse number? And he spake a parable unto them. The Bible says, to and, he, and the he is Jesus. The Bible says, and he spake a parable unto them. To this he. To this he. That men are always to pray that and not to think. I like that. That men are 
at me all, all in, all, all way to pray, to pray and not to think. In other words, you should always have, when things are going good, you should be willing to talk to God. Yes. Amen. 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 When things are going good, you, 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 you can pay the light bill and the, the house note is not behind and the, the, your spouse is acting right and everything is looking up. You should still pray. pray See, some of us don't want to pray when that, but we don't want to give God that credit. We want to quickly when we can't get the light bill to pray. Lord, help me get the light bill. Uh, he said, me and I are always pray. You ought to always have a prayer. You ought to pray when you get up. Pray before you go to bed. Pray during the day. Even when you think everything around you is okay. You ought to still ought to offer a prayer. Still ought to offer a prayer. Some folk only pray when, when they see danger mm. on the horizon. Yeah. Mm. Go to the doctor and he said, Mr. Coffey, that lump you got on, on, on your lump, well, it's malignant. Now you want the church. Now we know what how to get the church to pray. Y'all pray for me. I got cancer. We, how come we don't use our power before? Why do we have to wait till we are in something to start praying? Power. If God has got enough power to get us out of it, He's got enough power to start with to keep us out of it Amen. from the beginning. Amen. And then, and then, let me drop the jump quickly. When you get home tonight, you can read one other passage I had to read. But I'm not going to bother. I want to jump down. 618. Then I want to jump now to what Peter and John was doing when they were there with all of this around them. And what made them keep going, going. You, you know, because when you see danger, you, you're going to stop. In other words, you don't want to go into danger knowing that that's there. When there's a storm, you, you, you say, I don't, I, I, just, I, I, I see it and I, and I don't want to deal with it. That's the same way we do with our lives, and it's not necessarily a storm, literally raining and wind, but it could be a storm in our marriage, in our relationships, storm with our children, storm on the job, storm with relationships, period. We, we, we avoid Peter and John, they knew they were outnumbered. Mm -hmm. They knew that they didn't have the physical ability to escape danger. They knew that, Brother Thorne. Mm -hmm. They already knew it. Mm -hmm. And all of these subjects, the priests, the Sadducees, all of them had surrounded them and were ready and not ready. They did execute them with putting them in jail. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you something. Those guys kept preaching. Yes. But Thorne, they were given a warning that mm -hmm. don't do that. Spread no. that stuff all over this city and have people believe it on it. Stop right now. They kept preaching. Yeah, mm -hmm. And I tell you this, I say that because this is what keeps you going. What makes you get up this morning? Some folk every Sunday morning. You see them. You see them. I don't care if it's cloudy, rainy. They always, and you know what? And they always have a smile on their face. They always can it. I think I'm already in credit to you. I'm so glad to see you. Some folks, you look forward to seeing like that. They just uplifted already. They say, praise the Lord. And they, they, they say that and mean it. And you say, what keeps people going like that? Let me tell you what it is. Same thing they kept Peter and John preaching, even though they were going to go to jail. You know what that's called? It's called passion. Passion. When you have a passion for a cause, when you have passion for an object, man, that pride is unbearable. Now let me let me let me let me let me see you look, let me show you what I mean. Passion is an emotion. 
pose and emotion. But some of us never reach the degree that I'm talking about in passion. You know what I'm talking about? Passion is a strong emotion. And what it does is it compels, it compels you to want to grow. That's why Jesus, when he in Jesus' teaching, when he said, if a man asks you to go a mile, he said, right, he prepared, go, go with it two miles. And if he asked you for your coat, give him your coat also. And he said, if he slapped you on the turn down and let it hit you again. See, but but I know what I'm talking about. But that takes, you got to have that strong, some of us, some of us don't never have slack. You don't never have slack. Just don't smile at some. Some of us get so mad. I'm going to be church. You ain't smiling at me. You're crazy. You're a fool. That's what you are. I, I was up there all day, plastic stuff all over the window, and nobody think. So, put it down. But when you are have a passion and you have you are compelled to do something, it doesn't make any difference whether anybody pats you on your head, yeah, yeah. on your back. Yeah. You're not doing it to glorify them. You're doing it to glorify God. You do it anyway. In spite of the circumstances, go back and look at Peter and John when these guys threatened to put them in prison for preaching the resurrection. They said, just put us in there. We're going to preach anyway. And when they got in jail, you know what they did when they got in jail? They killed the Yes, they did. Some of us, all they had to do is shake the jail key. I'm through, buddy. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> that's why the church is, that's why the church becomes stagnated. First, we have to learn to plug into prayer. But then we have to look at, there is power in compassion. We don't have enough compassionate people who are willing to go the last mile of the way. We, we're, we're too concerned about our own personal We trip over our own selves trying to please God. Let me tell you something. Get yourself out of the way and just go ahead and do God's will. Amen. That's Amen. called passion. Yeah. Passion is having favor mm. with a call. Yeah. If you say you love the Lord, your passion Oh, the drive. I don't do what I do because of pain. I do what I do because I love God. Amen. Amen. That, that's passion. That's passion. You, know, you see, some folk, they, I, I, I don't like calling them, but I'm calling them. They're still. They fell out there, they're always fussing at. I don't care. I don't care what jealousy need to be done. They just do it. Yes. Yes. Why are you doing that? That's just him. But 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 we got we got two people. We got, we got a, a girl in the male side and a girl in the female. Hey, you say what? It's great. I mean, that's passion. Yes. Nobody have to be watching. Let me see. You know you you know you get crowd, You're just saying they watch it. And when we plug into that power of passion, that's when the church will itch. My proof is right there where I just read from. You want to look? Let's go back. Let's go. Let me show you. Go back to Acts chapter 4. I got to show you this. So y'all going to teach and preach a little bit. Look at verse 3. Acts 4 first. Look at verse 3. And they laid hands on them. They said, the Bible said, and they laid hands on them, put them in hold, put them in hold until the next day. It now even and time. it was even time. Be. How be it? Many How be it? Heard the word believe. How be it? That's the question. How be it? Many of them which heard, all they did was heard and believe. And the number of, and the number of them didn't count the women. Just the men. Yes, right. 
Uh-huh. The number of men was about yes! five thousand. We can't get five thousand men in the whole city of Jacksonville to come together to praise God. Then don't come at five thousand in the church of Christ. I don't even think we got five thousand men in the church of Christ. We got five thousand women. We ain't got five thousand men to have that kind of compassion. Some just show up and sit on the pew and, and gently sleep. <laughs> when the preacher holiday. But they're not passionately involved. God wants us, brethren. Many of us gonna bust hell because we won't do what God wants us to do. We're supposed to be leading the church. How you gonna lead in the back? You don't do anything. Look, look at what he said. When God showed up, when these guys did what God said, they said, How be it many of them which heard the word, they didn't see it, they heard it, the Bible said, and they believed on it, and the number of men was about just men. Good gracious of God, what a beautiful sight. Mm-hmm. 5,000 men? I believe you had all the church of Christ in the whole state of Florida. You could get, you get 499. <laughs> <laughs> but then, I'm telling you that because passion is what should be driving us. Rather than passion should be driving us. You know, what? We, 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 we got a great responsibility picking leaders out of, out of the brethren that we have now. Yeah. Get quiet. Turn my mic up. <laughs> <laughs> we have a grave responsibility of picking leaders out of the brethren we have now. Grave yeah. responsibility. First me. I know they didn't because I'm retired and still getting broke down trying to do work. And not necessarily physically, all of the other mentally and spiritual work that has to be done. Some days I'm here later than most of y'all when y'all got. Sometimes I don't get them. And I'm not complaining. I'm saying we need men to fill those holes. But you just can't put anybody in. But now when we select leaders, Leaders are not selected on popularity. Yeah. Longevity. You know, like on the job. I've been here 30 years. Like, yeah, 30 years. That, that might be all right, but that don't work in the church. No. Amen. That, don't, that, work, that don't work in the church. Longevity don't count. Nope. I've been here 35 years. What do you want? Bag or chest, depending on. I say that not being facetious, but it takes people who have passion. You know, passion is drawing. That's what they did. That did you see what they did with those men there? When a man has passion, he draws other men. Yes. I know that. You, did you see those? Just those two. Yeah. Because they were thrown in jail and stayed to stay the road, held the task. The Bible said they heard and they believed. And just the men were five. Passion is something, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Turn quickly, Philippians chapter 2. I'm about ready to stop. I'm not going to get off of it. Philippians chapter 2. I love this passage. And I love when you talk about plugging in. Man, you got to plug in. If the church is going to grow, if it's going to explode, brethren, we we the ones got to say, let's get a prayer. But why do we have to wait until our sister say, Brandon, y'all need to get a family. Brandon, we all be good. <laughs> I bet you we got to get a say, y'all come up and cook some really good football games on the night. We have everybody. Then we ain't seen in three years. Y'all come and put your like football games on the night. They show sure. up. But when we talk about prayers, and, 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 and here's our man right here. There he is right there. He just said this last week. That's our new man's ministry right there. Every one of you, brother, I'll be checking in with you. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, brother. I don't know. Keep on in here. No, no, no. Keep on. Philippians chapter. What does Paul say? If there be 
dead in consolation in Christ. Watch, watch what Paul says in relation to compassion. Mm -hmm. He says, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, mm -hmm. if any comfort of love, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of any the Spirit, any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels any of bowels mercy, of mercy fulfill ye my he said, joy. fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, that you be like-minded in the same love, same being of one accord, being of one accord, of one mind. And one mm -hmm. mind. Yes. You talk about compassion. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now watch. And let nothing, let nothing be done through strife mm -hmm. or vain glory. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, He said, let nothing be done through strife or anger. Apparently, it man. was done in the church, mm -hmm. or he wouldn't have wrote about it. Yeah. He said, let nothing be done through strife or anger, but, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. He said, search for Look not only every man on his own, own thing, but every man also on every the man of us. Let this man be in Let you, man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's passion. That's passion. Now I'm going to skip along because time is running up. Oh Lord, so much. But let me give you this. Probably got a hundred and some folks. I know. Girl, you know. She's the best thing. She's always great. <laughs> but if these two bread, Peter and John, their whole passion was proclaiming uh, Christ. And whenever they decided to proclaim God's word. No matter what they were confronted with, God would always protect him and guide him. If we're going to be successful, we got to come together to proclaim God's word. Amen. Of course, the evangelism 